Fender doesn't die on the hook. Van Damme cuts him in half. Like, cuts him, like, right in half. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. You know, I found out about that from, um, I found out about the differences in the work from this review by this guy called Oliver Harper. I think you've seen his videos. Yeah, I love Oliver Harper. I've, I've, I've seen that one, too. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he is. I've seen a Rambo Raph's review for that too. He wasn't yeah. too impressed with that cut though. No, not at all. <laughs> My friend Raz was telling me about a. You know that David Cronenberg movie Crash? Crash. It's with Elias Cotes and uh, mm. James Spader. Sounds familiar. It was about, it's about like these people who have like these James Dean complexes but it's like uber sexual so they get into car crashes and then they get it on pretty much and it's like all over the spectrum from like homosexuality to like necrophilia like the whole nine yards you know like they don't show necrophilia but it's implied <clears throat> very loosely in there but um I remember watching that movie when I was younger and when it came out and the ending, I never understood the ending like they, like James Spader runs into uh, Rosanna Arquette or whoever it is it's one of the Arquettes or, or maybe yeah, I think it's one of the Arquettes uh, is it Rosanna or Patricia Arquette? I, th I think it might be Rosanna Rosanna, because when did this movie come out? Like 96 or something? Yeah, yeah because uh, I think um was that movie that Patricia Arquette did around the same time? With Van Damme? No. Oh, Rosanna was the one who did the... Oh, yeah. Movie. Patricia did uh, Stigmata? Yeah, which was in the late 90s. Yeah. Great soundtrack by Billy Corgan on that. Great uh, Smashing Pumpkin soundtrack. It's not yeah. labeled under Smashing Pumpkins, but it's great uh, ambience type of... Uh, I don't know, um, very arcane, but, um, uh, yeah, like, um, the ending of that movie, Crash, I, I always thought they were, they got it on at the end, because they, they crash the cars into, like, near, like, a ditch kind of thing, and James Spader gets it on with the Arquette chick, and, uh, I thought that's how it ended, my friend pointed out to me that there's, like, deleted scene from that ending, um, earlier on, Rosanna, uh, the Arquette lady gets, um, her legs busted up. She, she gets into a mangled car wreck, and she's got, like, a, like a gash in her leg, and they, they put these braces on her and stuff. And my friends tell me that it was implied that James Spader, James Spader, Ultron, yeah. fucking bangs her leg wound. What? Yeah, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, what the hell? It's fucked up. <laughs> it's fucked up. So, he's like, you gotta see the director's cut after so much crazy, more added crazier stuff. And I'm like, nah. That's alright. Too much to handle. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I was just watching that fly deleted scene before the baboon. Someone put it up on the, uh, on the, uh, Frameaholics. Have you seen from the fly? Yeah, have you seen that where he yeah. tries to, uh, he splices together like, I don't remember if it's a cat or a dog or something, but that and the baboon. And then the bat, like, he goes over and he opens up the machine and it's like all melded together and, and the baboon part jumps out at him and it like, it scratches him and he throws it and then he goes and he like he like takes it out with a like a like a like a crowbar or something like just beats it or like an iron rod and, and then um he starts climbing around cause he's starting to feel all funny and he gets outside and then this extra like leg starts growing out of his side and he like rips it off and he 
he like chucks it, he falls off the building, bam, and he like rips off the leg. It's like, man, that's crazy, like, Cronenberg's got some like pretty, uh, pretty crazy imagination. He does. Yeah. I, I always wondered how a sequel, like, not a sequel, but like the, uh, he wanted to do another version of that movie. I always wondered how it would have played out, like, if they would have let him do it. Yeah. Because the, the remake was already a very fucked up imagination kind of movie to begin with, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And I started watching um, Freddy's Nightmares. Freddy's Nightmares. Yeah, that was horrible. Like, I wanted to like it. Yeah. I was just so, like, disenchanted. Because, like, Toby Hooper did the first episode, which is, like, a, a prequel. Like, a prequel to Elm Street. And uh, Robert England's in it and everything. And it's just horrible. Like, oh, it involves this cop and this cop's kids and... Freddie was going after them, and and uh, the kids were just fucking retarded, like, yeah. it, like, 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 just. I, I'm sorry to use that term, but they yeah. were just so stupid. Like, yeah. it was just stupid plot, you know. Point, and, and like, it was weird to see Freddie as a serial killer with the glove <laughs> running around killing like cops and stuff, and yeah. it was weird. Thought he was a child killer, and since when did he go up against the authority? Yeah, you know, I know the authority is against him, but still. Yeah, and he's driving around like an ice cream truck. <sighs> it's just really weird. Yeah. And it kind of seemed like another way to cash in on uh, the film franchise, since you know. Yeah. The, the franchise was really good, and I guess the new one sent them one of the capital laws on it. Yeah. Damn. I'm, I'm tempted to watch the rest, but I don't know if I can. Like, it was just so... Uh, like, I can see what they wanted to do with it, but at the same time... Yeah. Yeah. What's funny is that uh, New Line made quite a couple of shows based on some of their movies, mm -hmm. or at least they you know connected to the movies like um, uh, Mortal Kombat Conquest. Yeah. Another another one was uh, the Blade series. Yeah, the Blade series. I heard it was, there was an animated Blade series too. Yeah. It was like that anime, like Japanese animation kind of um, like little film or something, or mm -hmm. little series. They uh they announced um Expendables four today. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Twenty sixteen. Start, uh, 20, actually 2017 with a 2016 start date, yeah. I believe, yeah. But I heard that they want, um, it was a Jackie Chan and, and the Rock Johnson for the movie. Yeah, and Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. That'd be cool. I'm down, yeah. if, if they throw, like, Mr. T in there, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to see Mr. T again. Well, hopefully they learn the, uh, the mistakes they made with the third movie. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was horrible. Yeah, it was. I don't know what they were thinking with that one. Making the Expendables PG-13 and having them pave the way for the new generation was just yeah. a big middle finger. And then that big fucking scandal with it getting released early on online and shit. Yeah. Oh my goodness. 
It's like, no wonder people didn't want to see this movie. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, yeah. I liked it, but I would have liked it more if if they... Like, it would have been a really great movie if they delved into some of that psychological stuff that they didn't do since the first one, you know? Yeah. And I, I, I would have loved to see, like, the blood effects and... Because, honestly, the scene that killed it for me... Like, I, I gave it the pass, but the scene that killed it for me was... Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger comes out of the helicopter... And he goes to... They're on the roof, and they're going somewhere on the roof. And, uh... He's got Hail Caesar's gun, and he turns around... And he shoots a guy... And just fucking dust shoots out of the guy. Like, the guy doesn't explode... The guy doesn't, like... You know, there's no blood effects. And I was like... I was like... You know, in the first... In the first two movies, when people got shot with that gun... They fucking exploded. Yeah. Like... There was no... You know... There's no, uh... That kind of ruined it. So, hopefully, like, they gotta go back to the R. Yes, they do. Like, I'd love to see more of, like, Mickey Rourke in there. Like, he had a really great psychological character. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to see, like, Dolph Lundgren go evil again, you know? That'd be great. Yeah, uh, it kind of, um, that would have been great because, you know, Dolph is especially great at playing like, psychotic bad guys with a scene in Universal Soldier. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, definitely in Universal, he was amazing. Yeah. And, you know, he was, like, menacing. He definitely was. I mean, he was menacing, yet he, like, had a ball playing the, you know, such an over the top villain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just chucking the grenades. Yeah. We haven't fun yet. Yeah, it was great. He's like kicking back now. He's like, when I say jump, you say how high. <laughs> and the and the and the necklace, yeah. the ears and. You were like you were fucked up for a villain by standards. Yeah, they're everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, he Rocky Four, you know, he was like Yes. Easily his most iconic role right there. Yeah. I I got to go see the Green Inferno. Green Inferno. Yeah, it was limited release here. <clears throat> One week limited release. I I went to see it on like the second to last day. But actually no, I think it's ending tonight. But um that was intense, man. They had some uh, Rocky IV references in there. They, ha they have, like, uh, scooters that have names on, like, Madonna and, and um, uh, like, all these different actors and stuff. And then one of them has, like, Rocky IV written across it. Rocky IV. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. It's that must pretty... have been, like, one of the best parts of the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> I could have used a little more of the cannibals because you, you only get the cannibals like halfway through. And uh, they used the cannibals well, but I could have used a little more um, je ne sais quoi, you know? Like, a, I could have used a little more like uh, of them going, like, really tearing the people apart. Yeah. There's only like maybe two or three scenes where they really go for it. That's about it. Yeah. Like, the first guy, they, they like, rip out his eyes and his tongue, and then they cut off his arms and his legs and then his head. And then, oh, man. They cut off all of his body parts. Yeah. And it's brutal. Like, it's really, really, really brutal. It's not, it's not like, cutaways or anything. No, it's straight. It's straight. They go for it. Yeah. 